Tonight, condemnation and consequences of Iran's alleged murder plot foiled by Canada. Canadian human rights advocate Erwin Kotler, a harsh critic of the regime, targeted by Tehran. It is a shocking and horrible thing, and it's, it's totally unacceptable. And what it means for future threats. Russia's ominous warnings to Washington for greenlighting Ukraine's use of American long-range missiles. We must double down on our support for Ukraine. Immigration. Let's talk about it. The reaction to what the Prime Minister is admitting about his immigration policy. We could have acted quicker and turned off the taps faster. The Health Canada recall late tonight of carrots connected to a deadly E. coli outbreak in the U.S. You do wonder what's happening. The frightening crash between a stolen luxury car and a bus in Toronto. And a niche hobby in the natural world. It's one of the fastest growing hobbies in the world. The antics behind mastering the art of ant keeping. People don't realize how complex they are. CTV National News with Omar Sachedina. Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight with a shocking alleged plot to assassinate a former Canadian cabinet minister, human rights advocate, and vocal critic of Iran. Erwin Kotler's office confirms the 84-year-old was the target of a foiled plan by Iranian agents to kill him. He is under round-the-clock security protection. CTV's Michael Couture starts us off with what we know and the reaction. The state sponsor of all these terrorist proxies Erwin Kotler has been an outspoken critic of Iran for years, but it's meant for the last 12 months he's had 24-hour security protection. And for good reason. His office confirmed Kotler was informed of a foiled assassination plot. It is a shocking and, and, and horrible thing, um, and, and it's, it's totally unacceptable. As first reported by the Globe and Mail, the RCMP told Kotler on October 26th he faced a serious threat of assassination within 48 hours. Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc's office says he can't comment on specific RCMP operations. In a statement, the RCMP said it takes threats to the security of individuals living in Canada very seriously. It is scary to see um, a gunman with AK-47 in front of your house. Iranian-American activist Masi Ali Nijad has also been the target of an alleged murder plot by Iran. She admits it's scary, but says she's also determined to keep speaking out against the Iranian regime. Me, Erin Kotler, we don't carry guns, bullets, we don't carry weapons. But our words, our works, our voice are more powerful than their weapon. Some believe this foiled plot should be a wake-up call in this country. We, we have to realize that a lot of Canadians are at threat of this. Former CSIS intelligence officer Dan Stanton points out plots by foreign governments carried out by proxies are relatively new, but they are widespread. Recent U.S. indictments revealed President-elect Donald Trump was also the target of a murder-for-hire plot by Iran. They're determined to uh, basically neutralize in a way the the high status people who are speaking out various communities it's transnational repression essentially Liberal MP Anthony House father says Canada has taken a leadership role in putting pressure on the Iranian regime but he'd like to see our international allies rally together and impose severe sanctions on Iran Omar. All right, Mike, thank you. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said today his country's air attack on Iran last month also damaged a specific component of Tehran's nuclear program, but did not identify which one, adding that Iran's path to a nuclear weapon has not been eliminated. Meanwhile, in Gaza, cases of malnutrition are growing. The UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees said today more than 100 aid trucks were violently looted over the weekend. Also today, an Israeli airstrike in northern Gaza killed at least 20 people. Late last week, a UN special committee found Israel's actions in Gaza to be, quote, consistent with the characteristics of genocide, claims Israel has previously called, quote, grossly distorted. 
In Lebanon, at least five people are dead after an Israeli missile strike slammed into a densely populated residential area near government headquarters in Beirut. And sirens blared across Tel Aviv as Hezbollah launched a rocket barrage into Israel, wounding at least five people. With Russia's foreign minister in the room at the G20, the U.S. President Joe Biden urged the world to stand together and continue offering support to Ukraine, where a makeshift memorial is growing in Kyiv. Tuesday marks a thousand days since the Russian invasion, each flag representing a Ukrainian soldier who has died in the war. CTV's Judy Trin reports from the summit in Rio de Janeiro tonight. At a roundtable meeting, President Joe Biden urged G20 members to stand firm on Ukraine. The United States strongly supports Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Everyone around this table, in my view, should as well. As one of his last acts in office, Biden has given the green light for Ukraine to launch long-range missiles into Russia. Hits are not made with words. Such things don't need announcements. Missiles will speak for themselves. The policy change comes after Moscow launched blistering attacks on Kyiv's power grid. And as more than 10,000 North Korean soldiers bolstered the ranks of Russian forces in the Kursk region. We must double down on our support for Ukraine. Tomorrow is day 1,000 of the conflict. That's 1,000 days of aggression from Russia uh, and 1,000 days of sacrifice from Ukraine. In Rio, there's concern President-elect Donald Trump will unravel Biden's decisions. In his meetings, the prime minister is lobbying for Ukraine to become a NATO member. But support is divided. Host country, Brazil, backed by China, is pushing another plan. They want Ukraine to stop fighting and start negotiating with Russia. We don't have high hopes for the G20, unfortunately, but we do... We do want there to be some agreement on uh, the fundamental principle, which is helping Ukraine to win the war. Trudeau is the longest serving leader in the G7. As Biden exits the world stage and Donald Trump enters, Trudeau will move into a leadership role advocating for Ukraine. Judy Trin, CTV News, Rio de Janeiro. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is admitting to failures in his government's immigration policy, but he's also pointing the finger at what he calls bad actors. CTV's BC Bureau Chief Andrew Johnson on exactly who he's blaming and the reaction from the opposition. Immigration. Let's talk about it. The Prime Minister does that for close to seven minutes in a new video accepting some responsibility for being too slow on immigration. Looking back, when the post-pandemic boom cooled and businesses no longer needed the additional labor help, as a federal team, we could have acted quicker and turned off the taps faster. But he's also blaming who he calls bad actors, corporations, big box stores and chain restaurants who took advantage to avoid hiring Canadians. Some saw that as an opportunity to profit, to game the system. Trudeau is also targeting post-secondary institutions, saying many used the high tuition paid by international students to bolster their bottom line. In the House of Commons today, the opposition claimed Trudeau's got his finger pointed in the wrong direction. He decided to approve 211 percent more international students. He decided to lift the ban on temporary foreign workers in communities with already high unemployment. If the prime minister is hunting for the quote-unquote bad actors who ruined the system, will you have a look in the mirror? Many Canadian universities are now facing multi-million dollar budget shortfalls after Ottawa cut the number of student visas issued by 35 percent. Post-secondary educators say public institutions, especially community colleges, have been unfairly lumped in with predatory private schools and are simply trying to survive chronic underfunding. We absolutely uh, benefited from uh, the, uh, the greater amount of international stu student tuition, but that uh, masked uh, underlying a far deeper and more important problem. Multiple universities and colleges are now laying off staff, which will affect how many courses they can offer. Teachers say in the end, it is students who will lose. Omar. All right, Andrew, thank you. There is still no end in sight just weeks before the holidays as an appointed special mediator has not been able to broker a deal 
between Canada Post and the union. Both sides remain far apart at the bargaining table. Only benefit checks are being processed during the work stoppage now in its fourth day. The union is fighting for fair wages and safer working conditions. Health Canada issued a major recall late tonight of organic carrots linked to a deadly E. coli outbreak in the U.S., where there are dozens of cases across the country. CTV's Adrian Gobriel on what to look out for. They're a staple in kitchens across the country. This is a high-volume, highly consumed product. Yesterday, the U.S. Center for Disease Control issued this recall for both baby organic and whole organic carrots due to an E. coli outbreak that has left at least 39 people sick and one person dead. The American notice includes the Canadian brand Compliments from Sobeys and Loblaw's President's Choice Organic Carrots. Tonight, approximately 24 hours after the American warning, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency issued a recall of their own. That includes Bunny Love and Cal Organic Carrots. You do wonder what's happening, why the delay? Uh, I think by now, given the scope of, of the recall, the carrots are grown at Grimway Farms in Bakersfield, California, which is the largest carrot grower in the world. Those who think they can just wash away the E. coli may want to think again. It might reduce the risk uh, a little bit, but that is really the issue that we have with fresh produce is that we can't wash it off. Some food experts believe that droughts in California have played a role in recent E. coli outbreaks plaguing multiple crops in the U.S. state. Which forced farms to get, get water far from their operations. And sometimes they actually got water close to pastures where livestock was being produced. And that's where E. coli comes from. It comes from animal waste. While there have been a number of high-profile E. coli and listeria outbreaks in recent months, food recalls in Canada are down from a record high of 253 in 2021 to 147 so far this year. If you have one of the named brands of organic carrots in your fridge, with best before dates ranging from August 14th through November 12th, they could be contaminated with E. coli. As for what you should do if you have an expired product in your fridge, when in doubt, toss it out. Now, as an alternative, you shouldn't be able to return an item to the store you purchased it at. Even if you've eaten a few carrots out of the bag, you're entitled to a full refund. Omar. All right, Adrian, thank you. An update today on a tragic story in Halifax where police now say the death of a Walmart employee last month is not suspicious. I do not believe anyone else was involved in the circumstances surrounding the woman's death. 19-year-old Gursimran Carr was found dead inside a large walk-in oven in the store's bakery department. The Maritime Sick Society says Carr's mother, who also works at the store, discovered her daughter's body. Dramatic video tonight of a high-speed crash between a stolen BMW and a Toronto City bus. First, a black SUV speeds through a red light as the bus approaches the middle of an intersection. A second vehicle, which police say is a white BMW, ends up striking the bus, causing it to swerve nearly 180 degrees and into a lamppost. Nine people were taken to hospital, two with life-threatening injuries. The Toronto Police Association says two of the four people in the stolen vehicle were on bail. And more dramatic video, this time of a smash and grab caught on camera in BC. A stolen truck can be seen repeatedly ramming the entrance to an e-bike shop in Richmond. The owner says no major merchandise was stolen, but the door, windows, and several bikes were damaged. The largest budget airline in the U.S. has filed for bankruptcy. Spirit Airlines is struggling with major financial losses and stiffer competition. It's a trend happening across the airline industry, prompting questions about the future of low-cost carriers. CTV's Garrett Barry explains. Next stop for struggling Spirit Airlines, United States District Court. The airline is heading into bankruptcy proceedings and asking its biggest lenders to take future stocks instead of cash for the money that they are owed. It is a bit of a surprise considering how big the airline is. These bright yellow jets aren't grounded yet, but the company has lost about $2.5 billion since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Pilot salaries have risen and intense competition from other airlines have eaten into profit margins. It's a familiar story north of the border. Some of those same pressures hurt Lynx and Swoop. Both of those low-cost carriers shut down in Canada over the past year. 
But here, there's a few other barriers too that mean industry observers think the ultra-low cost model is headed for turbulence. A Canadian low cost carrier has no ability to offer the equivalent, let's call it, you know, a $70 fare, because the base of the number of fees that are added onto a fare are already in the $50 to $60 range. Duncan D. spent years at the top ranks of Air Canada. He says this is the only country where airport fees are so big and so widespread. Airports are on their own. If they want to improve anything in a terminal building, get a new air conditioner, for example. That's something which travelers have to pay. And in Canada, there's just not the same traveling population. Sizable cities are pretty far apart meaning costs are higher and potential profits are lower. There's always an opportunity and who knows, it just takes one change in policy from the government to really open things up. Will we see that in our lives, lifetimes? I'm not sure about that. As for Spirit Airlines, the company says tickets will still be honored and new reservations can still be made on their flights. Gary Perry, CTV News. Coming up. Ridiculous that, uh, that, that this type of thing would be sold uh, on, a, on an Amazon website. The calls to crack down on devices used to steal cars. Plus, the Grey Cup winning Argos back on home turf. Two men were killed and a woman left clinging to life after a man carried out a string of random stabbings across New York City. Unprovoked attack that left us searching for answers on how something like this could happen. Police say the 51-year-old suspect went on an hours-long rampage using these knives in three separate locations before he was taken into custody. The suspect was known to police for an extensive criminal record. Political leaders in Ontario are calling out Amazon for selling devices that could be used to steal cars. It comes after last week's W5 investigation into the auto theft crisis across the country. CTV's John Woodward has the details. My wife heard a sound. She came running out of the porch and yelled, get away, get away. That was only the first time Peter Barusha's Toyota was targeted by thieves. The second time, nothing stopped them. Security videos shows they sawed right through a steering wheel lock. Police warned us in six months they'd be back. And sure enough, they were back. The Barushas among tens of thousands of Canadians a year whose vehicles are stolen in an unprecedented crime wave, often using, police say, high-tech devices designed for locksmiths, but which have fallen into the hands of thieves through an unexpected source. We do know from previous investigations they're buying them on Amazon. Canada's industry minister sent Amazon a letter in June highlighting several device models and saying... Pending the development and introduction of restrictive measures, I encourage your organization to voluntarily take immediate steps to restrict the sale of these products in Canada. By November, they're still for sale. That's how W5 obtained one and started an SUV in the CTV fleet with the key nowhere nearby. Worrying some in Ontario's provincial government as it announced measures to combat auto fraud. It's ridiculous that, uh, that, that this type of thing would be sold uh, on, a, on an Amazon website. For them to be selling tools that allow us to to um, to steal call to, to steal vehicles I think is really irresponsible and they, sh they should not, not be allowed to sell those, those items Amazon says it did respond to the letter saying all products it sells are legal and asking when the federal government would pass promised restrictions as for Baruch he got a new security system that makes noise and sends him an alert on his phone because he knows he'll need more than a steering wheel lock. It's not just Amazon. Some other online retailers also offer these products. Authorities hoping they take heed as well. Omar? All right, John, thank you. Still ahead, the safety changes to an online gaming platform. Roblox tightens the reins on who children can chat with. Plus, a royal visit for school kids in Vancouver. A popular online gaming platform called Roblox is giving parents more power to protect the safety of their children. They can now access controls and monitor their child's activity remotely without needing access to their account or device. The most notable change takes away the ability to let kids under 13 
get private direct messages from strangers. A report released last month said the app exposed children to pornographic and violent content. An unexpected appearance for students in British Columbia by Prince Harry today. If you want to open them, you should inside find a couple of tickets. The Duke of Sussex surprised them with two tickets each to the opening ceremony of the Invictus Games set for February in Vancouver. Harry founded the event for wounded, injured and sick veterans about a decade ago. The Toronto Argos are back home after winning the Grey Cup for the second time in three years. Two out of three years. Um, so proud of my players. Uh, what a time it was. Coach Ryan Dinwiddie and the players returning after celebrating last night's win over the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in Vancouver. The Argos will host a championship rally in downtown Toronto tomorrow. After the break, why many bug enthusiasts are farming ants from the comfort of their home. Ants are marching into the spotlight and not just in backyards, but also people's homes. CTV's Kathy Lee has more on the trend. And surge in population. Often overlooked and underfoot. These tiny creatures are the stars of the show, at least in the ant keeping community. And thanks to YouTube videos like these, the hobby is growing in Canada. I I'm hoping to get like a big setup like um, the guy on YouTube. To get started, just a fertilized queen is needed. James Wingert has six and hopes one of them will lay eggs. They need enough space but not too much and like sugar so that they can stay energized. Low maintenance and cheap to set up, appealing to ant keepers. But the complexity of the colonies also fascinating. They have basic surgeries, they know how to make um, like some types of medicine um, and they even have things like assassinations and slavery and it, people don't realize how complex they are. The ant farms are a window into the tiny world. One enthusiast estimates more than 30,000 ant keepers in Canada. It's one of the fastest growing hobbies in the world. The hobby quite new to this family, but dad is on board. We'll see how many we can get uh, with the, the current um uh, queens that we have and uh, you know we'll just try and keep them in the box. The hope for this young ant keeper is to grow his colony to a thousand. It's fun to look at their interactions and how their society works like each of them have their own goal that they're trying to accomplish and so that that is just for the greater good of the colony. And to ensure the viability of the ant colonies in Canada, one scientist says ant keepers should source the insects locally to avoid bringing non-native species into the country, which can reduce the diversity of other ant species in the area. Kathy Lee, CTV News, Calgary. And that is a snapshot of this Monday for all of us at CTV National News. Thank you for watching. Good night and see you tomorrow.